Ah, good evening. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the mic wasn't plugged in, and now it is. So uh, hopefully you can hear me. So um, uh, a couple of things uh, we're going to do tonight. Um, I'm going to give a, a, a recap of all the exercises we've um, talked about over the last, well, this is 30, 30th live stream. So I'm going to go through all the exercises or give a recap of all the exercises we've um, we've done, uh, add another couple to that and give you a bit of a, a, a preempt to tomorrow's cycle of four. By the way, there's no session on Friday because it's a bank holiday and, uh, and then obviously the weekend. So um, <clears throat> before we go any further, I've got down the two books that I suggest everybody everybody gets a copy of. Okay, so this is Bounce uh, by Matthew Sayed and uh, Use Your Head by Tony Buzan. I suggest these, everybody buys these two books. Okay, so to, um, uh, Bounce is about sports psychology and goes into great detail about how we learn sports and how we become experts at sports whereas Tony Buzan is learning psychology and how um, how to how to the brain takes in information and the two go together really well so I suggest you buy those two books in fact um, as soon as you become uh, an assistant instructor with no tanks I buy you uh, and send out a copy of bounce because I think it's that important that people should understand, um, you know, how people learn, especially sports. Okay, so <clears throat> before we go uh, any further, um, I just was ha on a conversation earlier this week with um, a, a, a TV producer and director, and Arno. And he said, Arno just just said to try to explain our ideas of free diving, and he said that um, there's two ways to approach um, free diving, um, and that's one is to to kind of drive aggressive, so aggressive way, and there's another that uh, harnesses acceptance, and we have this acceptance um, f philosophy. Uh, and he said that, and he just came out with this line, he just said, time and depth are a consequence of training rather than an objective of training, for training. And this just struck me as beautiful. Um, so um, I just thought I'd mention it. So Arno just, just, mentioned, just said this, this line, and I think it encompasses everything that we try and do within No Tanks, that time and depth are a consequence not an objective um, and 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 this is uh, the more I think about it the deeper it, the deeper it kind of gets and um, I just if you don't enjoy the training then you're going to have a very short career and it doesn't matter what sport that is if you enjoy the training then uh, you're going to go back again the next week whether it's you know whether you're rehearsing with a band you know or or whether you're doing jiu-jitsu or freediving, if you enjoy the training, you're going to go back. And if you train properly and conscientiously, then uh, the end result is you'll you'll get to you know either black belt or time or depth, or you'll become proficient at, you know, as a band, whatever it is. Okay? So um, time and depth is a consequence of um, training properly, not a, an objective which I just love it, so I thought I'd mention it. Okay, so without further ado, let's have a quick look at uh, the, in, um, the list of exercises that I've uh, put together. So I've roughly grouped these in how, how uh, they fit together in, into a training um, kind of uh, regime. Um, but there's a lot of crossover, and I ha so I haven't put it into the ten aspects, uh, the no tanks aspects of training. I just kind of just to kind of group them as a, uh, in case you want to kind of uh, see them in, in a different kind of in different different ways. So when you're planning your exercises over the next couple of weeks, um, 
uh, you can you, you can you can categorize them like this so you don't want to do too many just stress breath holds or too many just distractions you want to kind of mix them all up and kind of pick some out of all of them okay so uh, it looks like uh, just seen on the, the stream that in Germany um, people are going um, uh, people are kind of meeting up um, uh, to do outdoor sports which is fantastic hopefully it includes diving in Germany so uh, you know hopefully uh, n um, England's going to be following suit so let's keep our minds in that kind of forward direction okay so um, <clears throat> let's start with uh, equalization so we use the ETT which my ETT there it is okay keep it on my desk at all times so the ETT we did uh, the basic ETT and the advanced ETT last night was the advanced ETT equalization training tool that's what that is uh, under that is the bombilla so that was the straw and the bedtime stretches now these three things go together absolutely 100 percent. they are a package so uh, the flexibility of the uh, thorax is stretches we need to stretch that cartilitic uh, joins on the breastplate and the ribs okay and that stretch comes from the bedtime stretches okay. the bombilla is the control of the soft palate remember uh, if you look back i was playing didgeridoo uh, circular breathing and this is me uh, the technique of controlling um, of sort of blowing out using my cheeks and my mouth while breathing in through the nose okay and the ETT is um, pulling up and squeezing air so that's more strength so really um, you could say that you've got strength uh, in the ETT the technique in the bombilla and the flexibility so strength flexibility and technique the three things that we, we need for equalization in that so you can be doing these quite a lot bedtime stretches every day bombilla you can do it as much as you, you, you fancy um, did it nobody uh, made any comments about didgeridoo so I don't know whether anybody tried playing didgeridoo after that um, and uh, equalization training tool after that we had a couple of uh, distraction exercises um, so minute holds we've done that once I think we might have done it twice I might do it again next week um, beautiful easy uh, exercise literally back-to-back -back minute holds so minute hold three candles minute hold three candles minute hold infinitum okay um, it fits in with any schedule so if you're waiting for your partner uh, to go out that doesn't happen okay you're waiting for a TV program to come on your favorite TV program to come on and you go oh, I've only got I've got like five minutes I know what, I know what I do I do minute holds okay you can just literally drop into them they're so easy to make them easy you know to change whether they are hard or, or difficult or easy a challenge okay you can do an empty lung whatever and you can you can interrupt them so if you if you stop them do something else quickly you can come back to it okay okay Jack and Ori um, uh, Julian put that together for us it was a fantastic um, uh, interactive video kind of a group exercise maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll try and set up a zoom Jack and Ori training session next week uh, now we've all well, now we're all proficient with zoom maybe I'll, I'll try and do that I'll, in fact I'll put that down on my list I'm gonna put that down as zoom Jack and Ori <laughs> yeah I'm going to try and do that um, put, put your name on the, in, in the comments if you want to be included in that zoom uh, meeting that would be that would be cool okay um, after that development so we've got cycle of four which we're covering tomorrow night I haven't covered it yet covering tomorrow night and lazy tables lazy tables really just teaching your body um, how long you hold your breath for you're, you're teaching it and it's you don't hold it for this long you hold it for uh, just a little bit longer that's that's all it is very very soft very very quick very lazy um, and co2 training are the crazy tables we've done that twice now um, and they are crazy um, but they are quite hard because they're co2 training and proper co2 training not like this uh, the, the tables that you get online where co2 isn't really an issue in any of the holds the, the crazy tables truly are co2 from the first hold whew, all the way through loads of co2 so they're really hard work and then 
um, uh, depth walks for hold awareness. Now that's one of the things I'm going to go through in a minute. Uh, depth walks, we do them at every pool session, not every pool session, we do them quite a lot. We do them you know, maybe three times a month uh, in the sessions, you know, twice a month, three, yeah, about twice a month. We'll do depth walks, really good exercise. Um, and I haven't included them up to now because um, it, it kind of didn't make sense while we were definitely were on lockdown, but now we're softening lockdown, getting out there, being aware of how long you've got left in a breath hold is, is going to be really useful when we start diving again. Right. After that, moving to the other side, we've got stressed holds. So we've got Solomon walks, uh, pain walks, and skipping. And uh, skipping is another one I'm going to do tonight. So Solomon walks, they're the ones where you do a static, then you get up and you walk a distance and then static, get up and walk two steps further than you did before, uh, and repeat. Um, they are the only walking exercise we do full lung. All the others are empty lung, okay? Um, <clears throat> and that's uh, partly because you, you, we, we kind of, we have to do something full lung else you'll never get used to it. Um, and, and the others are, um, yeah, all empty lung. Uh, pain walks. I covered them last night, so we're walking and uh, getting used to the um, the lactic cycle, the, the the toxins in the body that gives you give you lake, achy legs, which people say are oh, lactic lactic pain. So uh, that's that's that one, and then skipping, which is um, uh, I'm going to cover later tonight. Internal soft exercises. We've got breath awareness, which I've done twice. I love doing it. I love teaching it. I love the feedback I get. Beautiful, beautiful exercise. So that is um, just breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, being aware of the air path, and then slowly changing to the four parts of the breath. So you've got passive in, um, active in, passive out, active out, and it goes around in a figure of eight through the, the four parts of the breath and really being aware of it, softening it down. Beautiful exercise. Visualization, this is our depth awareness, uh, um, depth adaptation, sorry. The only depth adaptation we can do dry, obviously, because uh, you can't get deep dry. Um, so visualization, um, there are several ones uh, we can do for that. Um, I'd really like to get a, um, a um, um, guided meditation, so um, um, running for next week, but we haven't done that yet. What we have done is the steps through um, through one of my dives. So the first time I did it, it was very general. Second one is more specific to uh, one I used for a competition dive uh, you know, years ago. Maybe we'll do another one uh, to do with uh, photography, maybe. And, and but it's literally going step by step through every step of a dive, uh, from the warm up to the dive. To the equalizations to the activity at the bottom and then the steps coming back to the recovery breaths at the surface just in your mind not holding your breath for that amount of time just step by step reciting what you have to do okay uh, next up is flexibility uh, flexibility not flex ability who's that crazy person writing these badly spelled things oh me um, so doorway stretches, uh, put a video up with doorway stretches. So every time you walk through a door and pushing the chest through, uh, doing the, the shoulders uh, and monofin movement. I also covered in uh, the flexibility, uh, the foam roller. I really would be uh, surprised. Uh, no, I know that's the wrong word, wrong way around. I really would urge you that if you're going to do the monofin movements, doorway stretches you do every, you can do every time you walk through a door. So you can do that all day, every day. But the monofin movements, um, when you're leaning over and, and kind of uh, kind of modified cat stretch as it were, I would really expect everybody to then go onto the foam roller to open up the, the upper spine. And then a reflex training are the zany walks, which um, have I covered? Yes, we must have done the zany walks, yes. Um, and these are really teaching the body um, what we want to do with regards to dive reflex dive reflexes okay so um there are a walk or if you're on a on a, on a bike if you're a stationary bike not a, not a bike on the road do not do it on a moving bike but a stationary bike um it's very good for, for for zany walks 
or zany cycles. But really teaching the body um, how we want it to respond to holding our breath. So bradycardia or lowering the heart rate is only one thing uh, that the body does, and it does it really well usually. It does it really well. So what we do is we stop that. We say, no, you can't do that by holding the heart rate high and then um, uh, do do some breath holds that require the body to do some other stuff. So vasoconstriction, blood shunt, um, and a bit of work in the brain. Okay, so, so that's a fairly, I think, fairly good uh, list of exercises that we've done over the 30 days. We've done some others and we've talked about some of the wet exercises, but I haven't put them up there because these are the ones that I really, really think that people should be doing now while we're in lockdown they're all dry but it does cover um pretty much everything that we can be doing um we can be doing dry right. so hopefully uh that's uh kind of uh, helped you a little bit you can go through if you don't know any of them obviously you can re-watch or email me uh, message me and i can i can help out okay so um Tomorrow night we're going to do cycle four. So tonight I'm just going to go through depth walks and skipping. Okay, so okay, so skipping. Let's start with skipping. It's a standard session we do on a Wednesday night. So the Wednesday is the uh, Yang session, which is hard external exercises, and the skipping uh, that I'm going to describe to you is definitely oh, somebody's dropping something in the kitchen. Something uh, hard and external okay so um literally skipping that's all it is so you do nothing you hang around you're not doing anything and then you just start skipping three minutes of skipping okay now obviously uh if you're good at skipping it's going to be easier than if you're not good at skipping and you can practice skipping and you'll get better at it okay but the point is you go from nothing to massively in in uh, heightened heart rate, so you're just you exactly as you would on a free dive. Doesn't matter whether it's a competition dive where you'll be lying around not doing anything for hours, or whether you're just on holiday and just chilling for you know uh, for a couple of minutes on a buoy, and then all of a sudden you know, you're sitting there breathing up on a buoy. I'm going to dive now, and you dive, and you're asking your body to kick to go from rest to dive in a split second so we can practice that and that's what skipping is about so there's no warm-up you literally start skipping okay. three minutes and uh, because it's a free diving uh, escapade um, exercise not escapade what am i saying a uh, free diving exercise breath hold for the last 30 seconds of those three minutes again challenge don't stress okay and believe me eight seconds is good Okay, we set this 30 seconds as you've got to start doing it at some point. But I am a great believer in trying to change only one variable. So instead of doing like three minutes and then see how long you can hold your breath, which uh, might be, you know, if it's eight seconds, you, you've, you've been skipping for three, three minutes and eight seconds, or if you can hold your breath for 30 seconds or three minutes and 30 seconds. So you're changing the length of time that you're skipping for. And I don't think you should be changing too many variables at once so we keep the skipping length the same three minutes and you try and breath hold for the last 30 seconds and why three minutes do you say mark uh, you might well ask well um you can do four minutes if you want um but three minutes a hard uh dive would be three minutes okay obviously uh, you could do more there's you could do longer dives but if they're going to be longer than that then they tend to be uh, quite a lot of um, eyes closed, uh, s static feel to it. Whether it's sinking, whether it's spear fishing, sitting around waiting, or photography, or static itself, um, you highly unlikely to do a four minute dive uh, where which um, involves movement for the entire time. Y unlikely. If that's you, then do four minutes of, of skipping. But for most people, three minutes is going to be a long, hard dive, okay, if, if you're moving all the time. And there's no point in saying, well, yeah, but for me, it's a minute, because 
Um, okay, if your dives are a minute long, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want to be aiming at more. So we pick a nice number, three minutes. So, um, you know, that that's a good dive for anybody. Okay, working hard. Okay, So three minutes. We ask our body to do three minutes. Bam, work. And we try and hold our breath for the last 30 seconds. Okay, that, that's it. Um, I say you can uh, you can get better at skipping by practicing. Um, it's about awareness again, just keeping that rhythm going. Uh, but really good exercise. Um, and yes, people do do thirty seconds. And um, yes, people improve massively uh, over over a few sessions. Wouldn't do it every day if I were you. It is a stress breath hold, and as we keep saying, you don't want to do. Um, stressed breath holds back to back the body has to recover you're asking your body to change so um you're work, uh, asking for adaptation to happen in the blood that takes time that takes 24 hours 48 hours sometimes okay i remember loic uh when he was training for his his uh, you know his, his last super deep dive or all of his deep dives he trained once on a sunday and he'd do his dive and then uh go straight and have acupressure because that was the kind of thing he, he he was into massage and then do nothing on monday and then and then kind of slowly build up his day back to the sunday dive and this is exactly he's teaching his he was teaching his body this is what i want you to do and so just just do that one dive and then the monday he was zonked okay and in this these are super deep dives where he did nothing he pulled the pin Waited, and then filled the bottom, came back up. But his body was under so much stress and tension by the pressure and and the breath hold that he was, you know, his body was working hard. And what he was asking it to do is adapt to it. And adaptation takes time. So if you're going to do any sort of stressed hard exercise, no matter which area of hard it is, whether it's just a mentally hard exercise or a stress breath hold or a physical exercise, then you've got to rest after it. Okay, so don't do skipping every day, every other day, perfect. Okay. Let, allow the body to recover. Oh, one thing I didn't mention is uh, strength and conditioning and yoga, which they should be on that list. We haven't covered it in the exercises, uh, but you should be doing strength and conditioning one day, yoga the next. And I'm not going to go into great details, but strength and conditioning where you're, you're building uh, you know, standard cardio exercise, um, whichever choice uh, of standard cardio exercise you want to do, that's fine. We call it strength and conditioning. While we're in lockdown, it doesn't matter what you're doing, just do something. And then yoga, which is a soft, internal, awareness-based uh, physical exercise. Okay, again, I'm not Pilates, yoga, whatever, whatever your choice is, okay? But please try and fit that into to your weekly kind of thing. Strength and conditioning and yoga. Okay, so I've done skipping. And the very last thing I'm going to talk to you about is depth walks. Now, as I say, we do them quite a lot in the club. And um, you can't do them too much, really. Okay, so it's an empty lung exercise because it's a walking exercise. Uh, so all our exercises, walking exercises, empty lung except the Solomon walks. This is an empty lung exercise. And all you do is draw a line on the on the, on the the floor. It can be a line of, uh, you know, in, in the grass or a twig or anything, imaginary line. Just decide where a line is. Okay. Three candle blows, deep breath in, breathe out, and then walk. And what you want to do is decide, say, I want this to be an easy dive now if you've got a friend with you a buddy a, a, somebody you're living with obviously um with you then tell them say this is going to be an easy easy one or i'm going to challenge myself on this one okay doesn't matter which say it say it out loud put it on a piece of paper it was, it's really hard it's very it's very hard to lie when uh, to yourself when you've said it out loud when you've vocalized it. doesn't matter if there's somebody there or if it's written on paste paper or we've just said it out to, to nobody. Okay? Very hard to cheat yourself. But it's very easy if you don't say anything to come back and go, well, when I, when I, when I say hard, easy, you know. 
No, say it. This is going to be easy. And you walk. So what you do, find your line, three candle blows, deep breath in, breathe out, and walk. And you're trying to find the point at which you are halfway through your breath hold. You're just being aware of yourself and go, if I turn around now, I'll get back to my original line easy or with a challenge. Right? That's your objective, to find that sweet spot where you turn around and get back to where you started in the way, in the manner that you decided before the dive. Right? And there's no no point in lying to yourself. There's no point in it just, oh, I'll make this, this one's going to be easy. And you go and it's a little bit tough and go and just making it. Nobody cares whether you kind of made it back to the line or not before breathing. Nobody cares. Okay. That's not the objective. The objective is to learn where that sweet spot is. And it will change. If you just walk out into the park with no preparation, bam, it's not going to be as long as when you've done it, um, you've done a, a little bit of thinking about, oh, I'm going to do some breath holds and maybe did a, a bit of a, a warm up hold on the way there. Okay. Then the hold's going to be a lot longer. And it doesn't matter about how long it is, it's about finding that sweet spot to take you back to the beginning in the manner that you decided at the beginning. Right? How much to breathe out? Change it every time. So some of them do them empty, empty, empty. Some of them do them kind of passively, passively empty. Change direction, okay? Because it's very, very easy for us to kind of find this line that we start from a walk and then get you know kind of close to a tree for sake of argument and come back. And then the second one go, yeah, I want to go, I want to challenge myself. And it's human nature to kind of get to that tree and go, yeah, I'll go a little bit further than the tree. No, that's not the point. The point is to feel it in yourself. So change direction. Best way to do it was if, if you're in the middle of start in the middle of a field, go first hold that way, second hold that way, third hold that way, fourth hold that way. All right. And feel where you need to turn around to get to, to back to the, the surface in the manner you want. Don't push it. Okay. There's no need to. If you if you if you mess it up uh, and you get back and it's super easy. Oh, man, chastise yourself, say, no, that was too easy. You know, you could have gone a little bit further. The feeling I had when I turned round wasn't the feeling of halfway through the dive. It was about a quarter way through the dive. If you're coming back and it's hard, breathe. Chastise yourself. No, that was way too hard. You went too far. That feeling you had wasn't halfway through the dive. It was three quarters of the way through the dive. Fool. Because that's how you learn. Okay, so you should be able to nail it. So when we come back to the club sessions uh, or when you get together with somebody else, um, uh, when you meet up with somebody else, you can nail it. You can be proud of it. You can say, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do a depth walk and I'm going to make this one a challenge. Bam, bam, come back. Oh, yeah, it's, that was quite hard. Yeah, nice. Or you can say, I'm going to do this easy. Don't care how you walk. The far you walk, rather, turn around, come back easy. Right. So that's depth walks and skipping. All right. So quick look at the things again. Um, as I say, I'm going to add to this um, strength and conditioning and yoga. Okay. So any cardio work, any internal soft stretchy type exercise. Add those two. Sorry, those two. Add them to that list. Uh, and have a uh, have a go at uh, trying to put them all into some sort of training uh, for the next week. Okay, uh, so that's me for tonight. Uh, I've had a couple of requests for Cycler 4. I will get them out on the messages. I will message them across to people. Um, but we'll be going through the Cycler 4 tomorrow. It's um, a little bit in-depth as exercises go, but that's why we have it. Because most of the exercises are super simple, which is good, but you need some complicated ones as well. You need some empty lung, you need some full lung, you need some hard, you need some soft. You need some simple and you need some complicated. Tomorrow is the complicated. So, see you tomorrow night for number 31. Ciao, ciao.